Howdy everybody, welcome to day 25 of our Lockdown diary series. Today a little bit more on vinyl, I've been asked quite a few questions about vinyl so I'm going to do a few more today. A good tip for anyone wanting to just check that their cartridge is vertically aligned, what's often called azimuth, is uh, to nick your wife's makeup mirror like I've done here and uh, place the stylus onto the mirror and then observe the reflection of the cartridge in the mirror and if your cartridge has vertical sides it makes it a lot easier but the reflection should be absolutely a mirror image, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, of the cartridge itself so you should be able to just see no wonky image if your alignment is of your head shell is out in other words it's rotated with reference to the uh, toner then you will see this reflected image being uh, not perfectly mirror image it will be kinked off to one side so you can see that this one here MoFi have done their job spot on and uh, that arm is definitely on the same plane as the platter Another thing that I've seen on quite a number of turntables is people will go to all sorts of lengths to adjust their cartridge in the tone arm and make sure it's in the right spot on the record, but then they don't worry about whether their turntable is sitting level. So check it for level both left and right and also front to rear. And you should definitely have that nice level front and rear and left to right don't do this on the platter do it on the actual plinth of the turntable because some platters have a dish in them or they uh, rely on the record being tensioned down onto the platter which is not perfectly flat some platters are some aren't if you make sure that your turntable plinth is level for a start off then you can look at the platter if it's on a suspension system as a separate levelling situation. Finally, uh, tone arm balance. I like using this uh, old 1970s Shure SF2 stylus pressure gauge. So this is just a beam balance. It's very basic. Uh, I'm setting mine at just on 1.9 five grams which is where I found that it uh, sounds spot on for this particular cartridge uh, and it's essential to get your weight correct don't be too worried about being a little high on the range uh, it's not going to increase your stylus wear by any huge factor but uh, going within the manufacturer's range is a good idea but if they say say 1.5 to 2 grams don't be tempted to go, oh, well, 1.5 is going to be less wear. I'll go for the lightest. Just have a listen within that range and find where the sweet spot is for your arm and cartridge. Now a little bit on phono stages. I've been listening a lot lately to phono stages, and this is a MoFi Ultra Phono, uh, which I'm playing at the moment. I was using a studio phono in this system before, but I've given that to a friend to have a listen to. Uh, so... How do you determine a phono stage? Well, these MoFi ones are very adjustable. They can be tuned into just about any cartridge from a moving coil output of less than 0.5 of a volt right up to uh, higher output moving magnets of up to 4 or 5 uh, millivolts output. So they're quite adjustable. You can also adjust the loading internally on them. I'll show you another phono stage in a moment, which is uh, what I use in my other system. This is my other phono stage. This is a VTL TP6.5. It uh, has the Lundahl uh, Silver Transformers fitted into it for moving coil, because my cartridge is a low output moving coil. Uh, so as standard, it comes with either moving magnet or moving coil. You'll notice that it is sitting uh, selected with the blue light on moving magnet, that's because when you put the transformers into this, it takes up the space for the moving coil stage, and so you are locked on moving magnet, even though it's actually taking the moving coil, going through the transformers, and then uh, running it through the moving magnet stages of the preamp. So 
Don't get fooled by that, I am running a moving coil cartridge. At the moment it's just going down its countdown, it's going through its countdown um, sequence, so I'll just show you the remote control. The remote control is here and you can see that it has a power button at the top and a mute, then below that it has mono and phase. The phase is interesting, I found quite a few recordings that are recorded out of phase and sound better when you flip the phase. Uh, then there's the moving coil and moving magnet selectors and a rumble filter and then there is a load button and when you push that load button it scrolls through all the available load settings so you can actually hear the loading changes by just pushing the button and choose the one that you like the sound of best and then at the bottom is uh, a gain control to allow you to adjust the gain uh, so it's a very fully featured preamp that has a lot of really nice uh, user features to it. Makes it very easy to set up loading particularly uh, and gain to get everything how you like it in your system. I'll just show you the load settings. So uh, on this for the moving coil we have uh, 1000, we have 47, 100, and 470 so those are the options that are available to you in the display when you uh, select them I prefer the 470 uh, but uh, you can just on the fly while you're playing music flick between them gives you a really good idea of how loading changes for your cartridge the RIAA button is used to either have a uh, flat response if it's blue or a rumble cut position uh, if it's in the red. I normally run it flat. I uh, don't worry about a rumble filter because I just don't get anything uh, in that department from the Sota Cosmos uh, with its very good isolation. But if you had it on a, a turntable that had some feedback occurring uh, then you can just insert that rumble cut in there just to cut out those real low uh, frequencies that might uh, be feeding back through your system. Here's one of my uh, coffee tables, you might call them, made out of some old Paradigm uh, woofers. Well, actually, they're not old, they're new ones that have never been used, but uh, they make a nice coffee table. And this one, in this case, has a concave surface for putting remote controls so they don't fall off the coffee table. And my other one, just coming around here, it has... Uh, an illustrated history of high-end audio book on it and a glass top. So that's uh, making use of some drive units that I had spare and uh, yeah they do a good job of coffee tables. Time for a bit of music and this is coming through the Pro-X. It's a uh, group called Soft Machine. I'll just show you the album cover and it's called Land of Cocaine. I suppose the content of the cover it may be a misspelling and meant to be cocaine but hey who knows um, enjoy anyway
soft machine from Land of Cocaine. I'll read you a little bit of the uh, notes about the concept of this album afterwards. read from the back cover of the album here it says the land of cocaine is a country where life is a round of luxury and idleness in cocaine there are rivers of wine houses built of cake and streets paved with pastry roast pigs wander around with knives and forks in their backs crying eat me eat me while naked nuns bathe in rivers of sweet milk in the sky there is a palace of glass floating above the clouds. To enter this land, one has to wade up to the chin in swine's dirt for seven years. Okay, they were on something, but um, that's the story of cocaine. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and uh, definitely tick that like button box so that uh, we can get these videos more exposure and subscribe and by all means share and comment down below thank you for watching